Welcome to Damn Good Movie Memories with your host, Brian Davis. This podcast is the cure for your long commute and super boring work day. Hey there, it's Brian Davis, and for this week's episode, we're going to talk about our favorite musicals. Now, I'm going to admit, musicals are not my favorite genre of movie. It's not that I don't like the music per se, but it isn't a genre I really got into. That being said, I do have a few picks, though most of them aren't traditional. So my uh, my all-time favorite musical, and yes, I do classify it as a musical, is The Blues Brothers from 1980. It's not like they're singing the dialogue or something like that, because I, I really can't get into that at all. But the actual music is being performed by some cl- you know classic, awesome blues musicians like Ray Charles and James Brown and John Lee Hooker, Aretha Franklin, Cab Calloway, and the list just goes on and on. It is really a well-done musical. The, the music numbers enhance the story. Uh, some people say there is no story, but um, it, you know the story is kind of built around the music. But it's a terrific movie, and it doesn't feel like a musical to me. Uh, probably because there's no show tunes. There's nothing like that. Two other movies um, that I will quickly go through. Um, the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz, to me, is a musical. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, I mean, the, sure, it's dated, but those those are timeless classics, those, those songs. And they're fun. They're super fun. Uh, also, um, I do enjoy the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I think the music's pretty cool. Um, that is kind of like a singing dialogue type of... Um, movie but it's it's unique and it's definitely different and it is a cult classic as well all right lastly is fame now this is probably the more traditional um musical eventually was turned into a tv show so we could do movies that turn into tv shows one of these days as a subject but no i really liked fame it's a good story there's not a ton about it it's basically you know uh, music drama art school uh kids who uh, try to make it in the the cruel, harsh world of New York. Uh, but there's some really awesome uh, songs in there, and I really enjoy Irene Cara's voice. Of course, she ended up singing uh, What a Feeling in Flashdance. So before we go into everyone else's picks, I'll play my favorite song from Fame, and then we will get into everyone else's picks.
So supposedly Sarah has some very strong opinions oh, about this week's topic. I have very strong opinions. Which is favorite musicals. Musicals. Mm -hmm. Just the idea of it makes me a little itchy, a little awkward. You could pick any of the cruisers. That is not... It's not a true musical. No, it's not a musical. It's basically like an extended video with some scenes in between. Right. Or whatever. And it's not... Even more so, it's not because it's... The songs being sung are not by the actors. That's true. It's... And this is really yeah. the, the hard part for me because I get very uncomfortable watching people who, I've, who I know are actors mm -hmm. bust into song. Yeah. Just like I think I, we've had that conversation where I'm like... Is there any actors that were successful actors that went out and tried to be musicians and right. it wasn't weird? Mm -hmm. Like, we only came up with one. But So, to me, my favorite musical mm -hmm. would be the only acceptable musical ever, and that would be Grease. Okay. Why? Because when I saw it as a child, I didn't know they were actors. Right. I didn't even... The concept of acting and it didn't even compute. It was all... So, it was like all... Oh, it was yeah. great. And I don't think I'd seen them in any, any real movies is probably what it right. was, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, okay, I can accept that. Now, watching like Meryl Streep and Bronson, Pierce Bronson freaking bust into a Mamma Mia song yeah. that I know, one, is not theirs, and two, I've seen them in every other movie. Right, it's all Abbott, right? I'm like, this is yeah. just... Corny. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's like, it's that kind of uncomfortable thing where like someone's like, oh, here, I wrote this poetry, read it. And then they're sitting in front of you watching for your reaction. <laughs> you're like, and you're like, I'm kind of uncomfortable right now. <laughs> it's that's it's, it is. It's like, what? So, and Grease too. again, that one was okay because mm -hmm. I had never seen them in anything else. But Was Xanadu a musical? You know, no, because it was, it was a great soundtrack. Yeah. But Olivia Newton-John was already a singer. Right. And again, it was in like 1980 or whatever. Mm -hmm. She was already a singer who kind of just came in and she never had, she didn't really have any lines. She mm -hmm. was just basically doing a big video. Right. And then ELO did all the other music, but they weren't in it. That's so true. it's kind of, it was a different kind Which of vibe. Much, it wasn't yeah. like, you know, where all of a sudden they bust out into, so like, <laughs> I had a friend that said, oh yeah, I went to go see La Miz. I don't know. I remember. Yeah. And his and he goes, his friend's like, don't worry, it's not really a musical. And I go, is it? He goes, they sing oh, every line. <laughs> That's a musical. I'm like, that would be my death. <laughs> I would, I would be like, I'm. I, I, and so with this new movie that's out, everyone's talking about La La, La, La Land or whatever. Man. Yeah, you can go ahead. I, I would actually rather sit through how Stella got her groove back 17 times <laughs> than have to friggin' watch something like that. Like it just. I don't even think the people that made How Stella got their group. I don't even actually, like. I don't care. But at least it's not a musical. At least it's not a musical. And I think Tay Diggs is in it, so I'm good with that. But um, yeah. The, so this has turned into an anti-musical episode, but that's okay. Oh, but I will not, no, because but Greece you do love is the Greece. Same. I do yeah. love Greece, mm -hmm. and I mean, and that would be my favorite musical. And it says a lot because all the other musicals make me uncomfortable. And I don't even know if there is all that many musicals that I can think of. Can you give me an example of, of like other? Big, well, well, there's I'm, the classics. I mean, you have like uh, White Christmas and uh, oh, did those like count? Going My Way and Meet Me in St. Louis. Oh, see, that's I, Easter those, Parade. Those don't even. That's see, that's all You're, your classy you, shit. All right, that's you all your like modern relevant. Day, like, I'm the talking Wiz, about from the Wiz. Okay, that was the Wizard of Oz. It was, but it was the. There was a remake that shouldn't have been made. No, actually, that right. Yeah, that was like a. That was like the Soul Train version. It was right, and yeah. that was great. For, was, you know, everybody had their like that was their whole thing, but it was mm -hmm. almost different. Mm -hmm. In a way, but and it was probably cooler in certain Fame? ways. Fame was that a was that? It but was who kind. does the singing? Was it arguing Kara? Sta yeah. Well, that's that that's a good point. I'm just saying about musicals because mm -hmm. it's like if it's just um like a basically because there was movies like Footloose mm -hmm. or thing, where the soundtrack was almost as sure, big as it's not, not a bigger true musical. Yeah. Right, but it was mm -hmm. just that everybody's thinking about like, or even Rocky with freaking Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, it's like everybody associates the movie and the and the soundtrack right off the bat. But Correct. It, and to where it's like, it can kind of be, I mean, even though it's not a musical, it was like, oh, wow. You know, or like you They're were saying, synonymous. Xanadu. Sure. They were kind of hand in hand or whatever, which Xanadu was a genius because ELO was some twisted people, but they did some really like, you know, innovative stuff. For they did. So, you know, like they the did. way they mixed over and whatever. Jeff but Lynn is a they were, genius. Yeah. Right. So I'm sure there's another musical, I c but they just make me uncomfortable a little bit. <laughs> okay. I think is what it is. So, but yeah. Grease and Grease 2, I'm going to give them that one. Those ones are great. So can you still watch Grease and like be okay Oh yeah, okay. I can totally watch it. Yeah. Especially because John Travolta is sweet. Yes. And then, and Kanicki and all this. I'm like, God, they're all so old. I know. And again, there's things you catch that you're like, really? My parents let me watch that? 
It's nice. Stay with them. Yeah. You yeah. Gotta win so yeah. that's it. That's, that's my story. That's a good one. All Thank right. you, Grease. <laughs> okay, so we have the perfect person on for this week's episode. Ah, Enrica. Thanks. She loves to sing. She's a talented singer. Oh, thank you. I'm, well, I'm mediocre at no. best. Well, <laughs> in my world, you're extremely talented. <laughs> thank you. So, and you are. So we're going to do favorite musicals Kay. this week. And so I want to hear your very... Movie musicals. Oh, yeah. Movie musicals, yes. Yes. Um, well, several like stage musicals have been made into movies. And then there are movies that just exist as musicals. Sure. So I think I'll start with those first because the the whole Disney collection falls in there. Sure. This is your podcast. You can do whatever <laughs> you want today. And like as far as Disney music goes, mm -hmm. there are some real winners. Most of them are winners. Let's be real. They get some like the best songwriters they do. to do Disney. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some misses. Among the misses, mm -hmm. I put Mulan. I'm sorry. I know everybody loves Let's Get Down to Business. Yeah. But do you know any other songs from Mulan? Probably I not. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It didn't stick with me. I don't like Mulan. Oh, but my favorite of all time. Yeah. Probably of all movies and of all stage musicals and of all, yeah, ever is The Lion my King. King. Yeah. One you and two. Yeah, you're pretty, well, you're the only one to mention two, <laughs> so, which I love. But what, you can talk about why, why is the the original uh, Lion King? It's so, so good. Uh, I guess partially because they really brought in a lot of the sounds of Africa. Yeah. Um, yeah. and music from Africa is amazing. It's mm -hmm. insane. So they obviously had like the super whitewashed version of Africa, you know, in the music, the uh, Elton, no, Phil, Elton John. Elton John. Um, Phil Collins and Tarzan. Yeah. Yeah. Elton John versions. Mm -hmm. But the songwriters and like the, the or orche orchestral stuff, they have a lot of really cool rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, and then they translated all of that really well onto the stage yeah. musical. And they brought in pretty much an all African Musicians, stage designers, mm -hmm. set designers, actors to to really capture. So this was a, a movie first, then a musical. It was a movie first, cool. um, and then they made a, mu a stage musical out of it. Mm -hmm. And arguably, the stage music is some of the best music ever performed on mm -hmm. Broadway. It's breathtaking and amazing. And uh, I think there's a few songs that aren't vocal in the in the movie that they made vocal in the. In, on, the on the stage. stage. Interesting. Okay. Um, but I still like, the, it's not the lyrics that are meaningful at all. It's mm -hmm. the, you know, there's the orchestral part that plays during the stampede. And, and the rhythms. Just, like, and, yeah. really amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it also has all those iconic, you know. It's true. Gonna, just can't wait to be king. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. circle of life. Yep. Can you feel the love tonight? Like, hit, hit, all, hit, all hit. Good crank them out. Yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Disney, as you said, has a master list of people totally. involved in these movies. So. And The Little Mermaid, mm -hmm. um, people also really love. I didn't love the music in The Little Mermaid. It was okay. There mm -hmm. was a couple good ones. Kiss the Girl. Great. Under the Sea. Under the Sea. <laughs> yeah. It's like a little bit of a mockery of like Jamaican and island music, but it's... It's Disney. It's like, enjoyable. Yeah. No. Um, and I, apparently the stage play for Little Mermaid is really disappointing and Interesting. silly. But okay. um, I think the last time a good stage production was made from a Disney musical was The Lion King. I don't think mm. they can do better <laughs> than that. Yeah. Yeah. Although they did do it with Newsies. Mm -hmm. But the thing with... Also one of my favorites. The thing with Newsies is it's highly choreography heavy. Mm -hmm. So they cast like some of all the best dancers mm -hmm. in the whole country to do, you know, that show and right. then to tour with that show. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't think the the music was executed very well hmm. and on stage in in the in the movie. Christian Bale, yeah, yeah. I don't think actually sings, or does he? I think he actually sings I have in no Newsies. Idea. I love Newsies. We'll have to take a look. We'll have to take a look. Carry in the banner. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. Mm -hmm. I love the Newsies. Okay, that's Disney. Okay, um, and then just like. There's Chicago, which is amazing. Sure. One of the best pictures. Brene Zellweger, Catherine mm -hmm. Zeta-Jones absolutely slays the game. Mm -hmm. Hairspray. Yeah. Surprisingly good. The 1988 John Waters version. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't hate it. I thought it was okay. Yeah. 
It's totally different than what... The new uh, one? The J- John Travolta? Travolta one, yeah. Yeah, I think the 80s uh, yeah. one captured it a mm-hmm. little better, a little more... And definitely ones. for those who grew up with John Waters, it was definitely more mainstream mm-hmm. for, <laughs> for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still his own quirky mm-hmm. way, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's think. I think that was the Chicago hairspray... Rent was a huge mm-hmm. disappointment. Huge the movie, disappointment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love. Well, it's one of my favorite Broadway shows. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as any teen girl brought up in the early two thousands would agree. Yeah, you just like wrote Rent lyrics on the back of your folder. <laughs> <laughs> no day but today. <laughs> Sorry, have totally you seen not that? my world. So this is why I like getting this perspective. So. Yeah, I feel like I'm just talking. <laughs> All you nerdy, you know, musical theater nerds out there can feel can it. understand. Can feel it. Yes. Um, yeah, so what other musicals were there that were just movie musicals? West Side Story, obviously, but I've talked about my love for West Side yeah. Story so many times. Um, yeah, I think that's all I can really think of at Sound this of music? point. I don't like Sound of Music. Really? Why? Never have. Um, I just think it was just, it's like one of those musicals that if you take voice lessons, mm-hmm. Um, you're always like singing songs from Got it. in your in your lessons. Mm-hmm. Like it's every old voice teacher's favorite thing is to like have some like budding new singer sing. These are a few <laughs> of my favorite things, and it's horrible. It's a horrible <laughs> song. I hate it. Like raindrops on roses and flippins on kittens or whatever. So one of my least favorite songs ever. I hate it. probably because I'm an alto and like Julie Andrews is like a mezzo slash. Mm-hmm. Soprano, and like you're not gonna get me to sing well mm-hmm. in that range. I could try, right. and that's why the vocal teachers like make you do it. Right. But it sounds bad, and it so, makes you feel bad. So I'm curious about this. We're going off of the subject here. So when you're taking vocal lessons, the, they don't try to go with your strong suit. They try to mold you into something else. No, I mean, they yes. To answer your question, yes. <laughs> really, that's interesting. I mean, because it's not really about. No singer really, quote, has a strong suit. Okay. Taking a vocal lesson Mm -hmm. is teaching you how to sing all of the notes well. Okay. (laughs) Um, So if you're naturally an alto, that doesn't mean you can't sing those notes and Mm -hmm. sing a song, a soprano song. It might not sound great, Mm -hmm. but with the proper techniques, like you could learn how to do it. Right. And that'll give you a more, you know, a higher range and and the potential for a more illustrious career Mm -hmm. or whatever. And like... There were lessons where I I was doing well. I had like an eight octave range, range uh-huh. for my range test. And then she would give me like a, a song to sing in mm-hmm. that upper range. And I couldn't yeah. execute it very well. Huh. So, you know, you just keep practicing. It's just right. like any other training. You train the muscle to do that. And mm-hmm. my vocal cords just don't like to resonate at that frequency. Interesting. <laughs> they yeah. touch together and uh-huh. then you get, you know, the, the cracking right. when they clip together and then you can grow vocal nodes, nodes. which yep. I actually wound up getting because mm-hmm. I wasn't singing properly when I was actually doing shows. Right. You know, I would train and then I would go actually do the show and fall back on all of my bad habits. Because once um, you're in the moment, you're going yeah, to... Yeah, like I, yeah. I had to do Gypsy, and mm-hmm. I was June, and she sings like a, a lot of really high parts. Yeah. And I just hate... I sounded bad, and I didn't like doing it, and I was like, I, I don't think I'll ever do a show where... And try for a part that I know is like out of my mm-hmm. range. Right. So to answer your questions, singers do it, yes, yes. it's possible, <laughs> but it's probably not a great idea like for your vocal health. Sure, sure, you should... Yeah. Pretty much, <laughs> yes, train like a muscle, you're not going to yeah. do that much weight. And if you're singing yeah. classical, like, you're not going to hurt your vocal cords. Right. Um, but a lot of contemporary musicals where you're, you'll be getting cast are pop, mm-hmm. um, more or less. And pop vocals, you're not going to be singing with classical training mm-hmm. style, and that's what is healthy for your voice. Mm-hmm. I mean, healthy singing is classical singing. Right. And all the other screamo pop stuff, like Lady Gaga and even Beyonce, who uses amazing techniques. Yeah. But like, if you do that and you're in three-a-day rehearsals for, like, five weeks, you're going to not... You're done. You're done. Yeah. You're done. That's so. hard. So I'm, I'm going to take... 
your sound of music and use the analogy where if somebody's sure. learning how to play guitar yeah. and you have to play Smoke on the Water or Stairway to Heaven. Freebird. Freebird. <laughs> forget it. That's like, they're great songs, but you don't want to have to play that. You get, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I also just don't like the story that much. I okay. don't get that invested. I think there are better... Nazi Musical Germany <laughs> story. Gypsy. No, Gypsy. No. Um, uh, cabaret. 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 Yeah. <gasps> Speaking of, <laughs> yeah. Cabaret, one of my favorite musicals of all time. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie. Mm-hmm. There's their movie? Uh, Liza, Liza, Liza Minnelli. Minnelli. Yeah. Of course, Liza Minnelli. Sorry. <laughs> it's on, uh, if you have TCM, it's on TSM. TCM oh, really? So, I mean, yeah. I, I, when I did Cabaret, I was just in an ensemble member, but I remember them talking a lot about like Liza's performance yeah. of several of the songs and you know she's not supposed to be like an incredible that lead is not mm-hmm. supposed to be like an amazing singer no but she i mean she but, is a great singer and that so, was the yeah, problem yeah. is they cast liza minnelli yeah. and now every actor that goes out for sally bowles is like do yep. i sing like liza or do i sing like sally bowles exactly yeah. um most people go for liza because that's what the audience is expecting that's what people like now so um, or used to yeah but i Liza. Yeah. I love Liza. Are they any, like, classic, classic, like, in the 30s and 40s musicals? That, 30s yeah. and 40s. I mean, Anchors Away, anything mm-hmm. with Frank Sinatra, mm-hmm. um, Gene Kelly. Yeah. Uh, so do you like, like, My Fair Lady or yeah. Singing in the Rain? Singing in the Rain mm-hmm. is one of my favorites. All of those are just, anything with, you know, Frank Sinatra, Gene Kelly, yeah. the Rat Pack yeah. are a little later than, like, the 50s, but mm-hmm. any of, like, the... White those, Christmas? Yeah, I mean, I'm not crazy about any of the super, like, white America ones. I like the ones that kind of, like, push the sure. the envelope. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of things you can say, cult- like, about society with mm-hmm. music that sure. you can't really do with, you know, other... I guess, I mean, if you're into musicals, then, yeah, you see it that way. But right. you might not see it that way if you're not into That's musicals. That's fair. Yeah. Music moves me, it doesn't move everyone. Sure. But yeah. White Christmas... Very jolly and enjoyable. Yeah, and and I can I can dig it. <laughs> yeah. So, if you were to choose between The Wiz and The Wizard of Oz, which one would you choose? Um, I like or The can Wizard you separate of Oz. Them? I'm surprised I didn't mention The Wizard yeah. of Oz. It's one of my first um, movies that I ever saw. Right. And I would dance around the store at the end, sing under the, under the rainbow all mm-hmm. the time. But The Wiz, <laughs> I love The Wiz. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun. Yeah. I love The Wiz. I love the way it kind of pushes boundaries, and yeah. I just always enjoyed it. But I think I'm going to go with The Wizard of Oz. Go the Wizard of Oz, Because yeah. I am a Judy Garland, you know, Liza. Uh-huh. Talk about your love for Liza. You can't not talk about your love for Judy. Well, that's why I love um, Meet Me in St. Louis, because it, there isn't a lot of music in it. Oh! <laughs> but it is technically so musical. You- <laughs> I'm not a huge musical, <laughs> musical fan. This is why I'm letting you have the... The bulk of this episode. I see, yeah, yeah. I see. So I like non-traditional musicals, like the Blues Brothers or something I love like that. The Blues Brothers. Yeah, and people don't think of it as a musical, but it really is. It, oh my god, yeah. it is. Absolutely yeah. is. What else would it be? You know, it's just an action comedy because they're always on the run. And it's a they, musical. But, of course, but there's all these like crash. men don't want to say they like musicals, and it's kind of designed for. It is because male. it's all R and B music. It's not show tunes. It's blues. It's, yeah, it's awesome. So, um, yeah, that's dead by far my favorite musical. But, I love uh, the Blues Brothers. And the Blues Brothers 2000, which a lot of people hate. Music's great in that, too. I love Blues Brothers <laughs> I don't think the story's that... I mean, it's tough it's not, about I don't. I mean, I so. never watched it for the stories, because nah. I'm the music person. I watched. Yeah. I would fast-forward through the plot parts, which I found boring yeah. and silly, because <laughs> I, I didn't find it funny. Okay. It wasn't my sense of humor, but mm-hmm. I was like... I just want to hear them. Like the I just want to hear Aretha. Your oh, of course. Like, well, know? that's what I love that the the redone version that's ex- extended scenes. They like they draw out John Lee Hooker mm-hmm. scene and like you I get. I love John Lee. Oh, Hooker. he's amazing. And James Brown and obviously Aretha Franklin and Cap Calloway. I'm like, it's there's amazing. so many. Yeah. It's so, so good. Like how can Ray you Charles. not yeah. love that music? Oh. It's yeah. so good. We're getting kicked out. We're getting out kicked out. So I can talk about this forever, but thanks for letting Great me talk. Great job, Enrique. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to have Stephanie intro this, doing some acapella whatever. Hi, society. Wait. <laughs> I was about to say. Hi, society. Hi, society. I wanted to do my Louis Armstrong voice, but I can't. Hi, society. Almost. That, that was almost you kind of did that last time with Bone Daddy. Right, right. So, yeah, there you go. So this is good. So if you didn't know already, we're doing uh, favorite musicals this week. Mm-hmm. And if it's this is one of Stephanie's favorite subjects. Yes, and, it is. And, of course, we're dragging Linley along while she eats a uh, ice cream taco. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Ice cream in the middle. <laughs> so if we hear munching in the background, you'll you'll know that we're enjoying our treats at work. 
Okay, so let's get into this. So, okay, you know, you, I was thinking about how to categorize this. Mm -hmm. So there's the musicals of childhood yep. that you love that shape you as a human being, mm -hmm. right? So for me, that's Wizard of Oz, Mary Poppins, and The Muppet Movie. Sure. Those three musicals, I think they've had more power over me. They've shaped me. Mm -hmm. And so I come back to them over and over and over again. The Wizard of Oz, clearly, because sure. you've had the power all along. Uh -huh. And, you know, that's the key, right, throughout uh -huh. life. Every single time you think things are out of control, mm -hmm. you've had the power all along. It's always within you. Right. Yes. Now, the Muppet movie is an interesting choice. Yes. I never really thought of it as a musical, but it is. Oh, it yeah. is. Rainbow, Rainbow Connection. Connection. There's no greater song. And if you didn't know Stephanie, that was her, is it still your ringtone? Still my ringtone. Yeah, it always makes a, a <laughs> smile here or laugh when it, when it starts to ring. So yeah, there's also going. in the Muppet movie, there's that great song, Moving right, uh, moving right along. Right along. <laughs> 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 I won't sing on your podcast. That's horrible. Yes, I love well, that. Well, you're eating too. <laughs> 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 what? What's the problem? <laughs> Video love podcast them. next week. And this will be fun. <laughs> so. And I love Mary Poppins. Oh, yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. P.L. Travers. I love the book. Mm -hmm. I love the musical. Yeah. And then I love that movie that was it was so incredible. Emma Thompson wrote it. Yeah, Finding Mr. Banks. Finding Mr. Banks. Yeah. Oh, or my Saving gosh. Mr. Banks. So Finding, that wasn't a musical, yeah. was it? No, that wasn't a musical. Saving Mr. Banks. boy, yeah. that is a 10 hanky movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, especially if you have daddy issues. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That movie will kill you. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Okay, I'm talking too much. But Mary Poppins no, was a uh, big pick for most people. So that oh. was that's a common one. Dick Van Dyke. You yeah, know, I when know. I was a kid, my grandfather worked for Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And... Dick Van Dyke's, um, you know, the instrument that has all the instruments, the drum and the tambourine, yeah. everything is on it. The guy that lived down the street from me, he built that for Dick Van Dyke. No way. And it was so cool because um, my grandfather knew him, so then I got to come over and I got to meet Dick Van Dyke. Oh. Alcoholic, raging alcoholic. Really? My brother had a drinking problem. Oh. But, you know, my father had a drinking <laughs> problem too, so it was fine for me. Was he a, <laughs> was he a happy drunk? I, or? No, I mean, yeah, you know, just He's really... covered now, though. Red faced. I mean, yeah. now I think, I, yeah, I don't, sure. I don't know about him now, but then, oh. yeah. Revelations yeah. here on <laughs> Damn Good Movie Memories. But, but man, he was a sweetheart of a yeah. man, and, you know, I got to try on the, the little oh, straps. No and, yeah, no, the, the true story. Uh, there's a picture somewhere. Oh, wow. Really, really cool. So I should interview my, my dad, because he actually saw when he was a child in Pasadena the Dick Van Dyke show live. Yeah. Like, he was in the studio audience for that. Oh. So, um, yeah, he's visiting his grandmother, and so yeah. they got to see that. Yeah, yeah. so I should find out. The raging alcoholic just kind of kills me. I think of him as, like, the perennial, the level dad, yeah. lovable dad. No, yeah. well, I mean, Dick Van Dyke I know. show, Mary Poppins. I don't know, my grandfather's no longer here, so I think it's fine to give up one of his secrets. Sure. But, you know, I think, like, there's the filming of Mary Poppins, I think. Oh, really? I think. I'm gonna have to, <laughs> we have to dig on this was one. was drunk from beginning to end. <laughs> But I stopped. He don't pulled care. it off. He so. was he was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Winley. Between bites. No, this is so bad. I didn't intend to eat all that. Okay, now I'm gonna hurt anybody want to bite. Yeah. <laughs> so if you didn't know, Winley likes to offer food and then immediately throw it away if you don't answer in five seconds. <laughs> if you don't so. answer me in five seconds, yeah. I would like immediately feel it's like already it's a rejection the trash. and I throw it away. <laughs> Um, sorry, that was yeah. tastier than I expected. Yeah, I really recommend it. The caramel, really yeah. good. Okay, we're having ice cream tacos. <laughs> yeah, chocolate tacos. I'm yeah, there. Um, yeah. So I only have one. Well, I love all those choices. Those are really great choices. I would have said Wizard of Oz, but I assume that other people would. Not as many as you think. And Mary Poppins. Mary yeah. Poppins. Huh? Um, did not think of them up at maybe, but I love them. Maybe good I choice. saw it at the drive-in, like yeah. when it Aww. was out, and mm -hmm. I just remember the um, pleasure of watching. Kermit the Frog ride a bike. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the frog legs, yeah. like the fried frog leg sign. One thing about almost all of the early Muppet movies, they all had music in them. Like, yeah. whether it be, obviously Muppets take Manhattan, but yeah. also the great Muppet Caper had a lot of music in it, too. So, so. did the Muppet show. The Muppet, of course. Yeah. Had, like, yeah. vaudeville bits and yes. everything. Yeah. Oh, sorry, okay. Um, but my favorite musical... Mm -hmm. Is Hedwig and the Angry Inch? Oh. Family mentioned yeah, that. Yeah, and it's a, it's just a great, great. The soundtrack is amazing. It's something I own and listen to all the time. It's all original music by Stephen Trask. I mm -hmm. think is his name. I could be saying that wrong. Maybe it's Stephen Trask. I think it's Stephen though. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and it's just great. I mean, I cannot recommend it enough. Um. Yeah, I think that's the last thing that John Cameron Mitchell did that I really loved. So I was really expecting great things from him, but I don't know. It was amazing. Yeah. So did it. you have you only seen the? I've only seen the movie. movie. I've never okay. seen it live. I know they brought it back for um, with what's his name, 
the Tony guy. Oh, um, um Dookie Hauser. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil yes. Harris, sorry. Yeah. He's so heard you, in the revival. You will have to hear oh. the amazing story that Malin has. Oh, man. He with, always has amazing stories. And so I'll play this one first and then follow it up with, with uh, Malin. <laughs> oh, Malin's. it's going to be such a... Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Highlight it with Malin. Don't play Malin first. It's a, oh, a, it's a, an it's a terrific story. So. Oh, he uh, always has great stories. He does, and that's what, that's why he's on this podcast. <laughs> he makes it a damn... But you two make it a damn good movie podcast as well. So, All right, Steph, what are your other Okay, picks? so then if you go into adolescence, right? Yeah. So that's childhood, and then you mm-hmm. move into adolescence. And then I think the musicals that, like, just... They were critical to my adolescence. West Side Story... Yeah. Yeah. My Fair Lady and Fiddler on the Roof. Like, mm-hmm. those three musicals, I just watched them over and over mm-hmm. and over again. West Side Story for obvious reasons. Like, that, I think that was really, really powerful for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I wanted to be Anita. I mean, I never, I had zero interest in being Maria. Mm. I just so desperately wanted to be Anita, and mm. there's no way to cast me as Anita. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're going in a different direction. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My um, mom went to high school with Richard Niemer, oh. who plays Tony, right? That's mm. why yes. we watched it together, and she went, because she grew up in the Hollywood, and went to oh. North Hollywood High, and so did he. So good, so good. The so only good. Like, trivia answer I got right at one of those... Group trivia. Things. Who played, uh, who played Tony? Tony. Yeah. It was like Richard Beamer. I know. My mom went to high school with him. When I was in high school, I was right down the street from Poly, Polytechnic High School. Oh, oh, oh you should go to Hollywood High School. Yeah, yeah, that's a couple, My couple mom miles down the way. Go to Polytechnic High School. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. Um, yeah, and I love Settler on the Roof. Yeah. Topol is seriously one of the great characters. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm female, but I would love to play that role yeah. on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I love Settler on the Roof. Um, what else? I love Yentl. A Piece of Sky. Really? Oh my gosh. A Piece of Sky. That is like the, the greatest piece of mm-hmm. music. I think that's that's got to be. I mean, it's debatable because I love so much, but mm-hmm. I think her. Her vocals on a piece of sky. When she mm-hmm. goes, you know, Papa, I can see you. Papa, I can feel <laughs> yeah, you. Papa, watch me. And then she hits that fly. Yeah. I can't hit that note to save my life. I bawl like a baby every mm-hmm. time I hear it. It is, yeah. Barbara. And then, of course, Barbara, Funny Girl. Yeah. I love Funny Girl. Right. Um, yeah, I love Funny Girl. I'm talking too much. I just no, love you're musicals. not. I only have yeah, one yeah. choice. I have one, one ship choice. When Louise Kermit's going to chime in on this one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Would you have other ones? I'm like Ed McMahon here. Okay, yes. good, good, good. Thing, I'll set you up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You are correct, sir. Yes. Yeah. Highly recommend that to And it's so much more than a piece of sky. The vocal work in, and the, the subject matter and the themes of those songs, you can revisit them over and over again, and they bring new things into your life. And right. That's the thing about musicals. Like Because I've rewatched them so many times, and I've listened to the soundtracks over and over Lyrics, little bits and pieces of songs, they're in your head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They come to you and you feel like it's the divine communicating with you sometimes, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have Stephanie on. <laughs> I love the power of a musical. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Then there's Chorus Line. Yep. Which I, I think I've talked about Chorus Line on this before. Uh, I don't know. I if you have, love yeah. Chorus Line. Mm-hmm. Michael Douglas is brilliant. Mm-hmm. And every single song is better than the last one. I've never seen it on Broadway either, mm. or on the mm. stage ever, which I, I think it would be like a thousand times better yes. live. Still, is it still running? Or do they have revivals? Yeah, every once in a while they'll have a revival. Yeah. I don't know if, if it's on stage anymore, but man, I'd like to see I mean, it. I remember yeah. it as a kid being yeah. like the thing, and mm-hmm. then they made the movie, of yeah. course, but... And some of the songs are so worth it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Surprise is all about a man's first um, uh, losing his virginity. Mm-hmm. It's all about the first time, you know, he orgasms in intercourse. Mm-hmm. It's fabulous. <laughs> She's under the table. Lately <laughs> can't handle this. Jesus. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> some decorum. So, it's such a strange. great song, though. I love Surprise. It's so like much. the coughing guy over there. I just uh, love some restraint. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love so much. Or the way uh, men sneezes. Have some restraint. <laughs> this podcast just became ex- explicit, so I will remember. Well, <laughs> no, because there's, there's tits and ass. <laughs> yeah. That's the other song in chorus That's line. Comical. Okay, yeah. There <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> tits and ass is funny. Oh, TNA. No, that's funny. That sounds like a great song. Male it orgasm now. Me when you said yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So, <laughs> top that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, and then I think also I have to mention Moulin Rouge. Oh, okay, like, yeah. I loved Moulin Rouge. Mm-hmm. I, you and McGregor, that whole like melody they do of various popular songs that they've put together. It's mm-hmm. like Elton John songs and other people's songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. I still listen to that to this day. I love you and McGregor. <laughs> See Moulin Rouge if you haven't seen Moulin Rouge. It's so good. Um, and then there's The King and I. Yeah. 
I love the King and I. Mm-hmm. I love Yul Brenner. Yeah. Anything that Yul Brenner's in is incredible. Ten Commandments? <laughs> <laughs> That's like Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What else? Like, He's been in a lot of Everyone things. was in Ten Commandments. Yeah. Was like, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and then High Society, right? What oh, I yeah. With. yeah. So I love High Society. And it's funny because every once in a while when you want to watch it again, I always get it confused with Philadelphia Story. Oh, okay. Because it's the same, it's essentially premise. the same tale, yeah. same yeah. premise. Without music. Oh, wait. Yeah, Philadelphia like, Story. I want the one with music. Right. Not the one without music. And the one without music is charming and wonderful. Yeah. It's black Great and white actors. on its yeah. own. Mm-hmm. Love it. Wait, it's uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart, Stewart. Cary yeah. Grant, and uh, Catherine Hepburn. Yeah, it's yeah. so worth seeing. Oh, um, it's great. I, that's, I like that one better because there is no music. I love High Society because... Yeah. Louis Armstrong is in High Society. Mm-hmm. Well, you get to see bits and pieces. My favorite trumpet player of all. So do you have any classic, classic ones, like from the 30s, 30s and 40s? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that because I thought it would, like, give me more credibility and make me sound <laughs> No, <cooler. there's>, <laughs> But, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I saw Singing in the Rain. Or Wizard of Oz, and, but, yeah. You know, like, and I saw some of those. Mm-hmm. Like, there's Guys and Dolls. Oh, yeah. And then there's, oh, like, what's the other one? Dancing. Easter Parade. Oh, yes, there's like, Easter Parade. Mm-hmm. Do you know the ones where they do the synchronized, oh, yeah. like, leg movements? Yes. Like, Beauty and the Beast. That's this great. Oh, or all of it. those spoons um, and forks. <laughs> oh, what was her name? Her last name was Williams, but she was the uh, synchronized Esther swimmer. Williams. Esther Williams. Esther she Williams. would do a lot of those yeah. kind of yeah. Um, yeah. I think one of my mom's favorites is like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers yes. and Brigadoon and things like my that. My father-in-law yeah. passed. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. He like loves Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Mm-hmm. That one's crazy. And then also, like, I don't know if anybody's going to talk about it, but mm-hmm. because I'm a Disney baby, I have to. I think all the major animated Disney films, they qualify as musicals. Absolutely. They're all musicals. Yeah. 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 So Beauty and the Beast, mm-hmm. I think, Especially and the, the Jungle 80s. Book. Yeah. Oh, oh, the Jungle Book? Yeah. The, the Jungle, Jungle, Jungle Book. Book has great music. Oh, yeah. The Jungle Book's got to be up there, great like, music. my top five greatest musicals yeah. of all time. Well, what was the main song? The, um, um, look for the bare yeah, necessities. That, that's right. This. And then, but there's that amazing King Louis. Yeah. I'm the king of the swingers yeah. club, the Jungle <laughs> VIP. That's a great it song. It is a, a good song. They're always catchy. <laughs> Even um, Snow White. There's yeah. all of the, the dwarf songs. Well, they have yeah. those yeah. amazing musicians and composers always. working yep. yeah. for them. Then That was good. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, even you know, today we love Moana. Like, my mm-hmm. whole family is obsessed with Moana. Yeah. We're There's all singing songs. every single one of those songs. We yeah. now love Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I, sw- I tell you, wrestlers make good actors. Yeah. Because they're basically acting anyway. The so, guys yeah. in <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah, Dave Bautista. Yeah. 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 But have you talked at all? I hope you interview somebody about mm-hmm. the the person, the moviegoer that hates musicals. So, like, my husband falls into this mm-hmm. category. My husband also hates. Musicals. If it's a musical, he, he won't go see it. Right. And you know, he mocks West Side Story endlessly. You know, because he's been with me for how many years right. now? He mocks it. And he's like, "Oh yes, I'm a man, and I'm going to a rumble. And now I'm gonna <laughs> throw my feet out into the air, and I'm gonna, you know, snap my fingers." Well, the Jets were really funny. Does, uh, I think SNL has parodied that a lot of times. Sorry, I keep referring. No, to it. they have a hilarious <laughs> Jets and what is it? Jets and sharks. Sharks. Yeah, yeah Jets yeah. and sharks. Uh, maybe you should have Manny on the podcast. I'm I mean, telling you, you, you've got it because I, I, this is a psyche I don't understand. I mean, I, I married Yin Yang. We're sure. complete opposites mm-hmm. and it just works for us. And I have to trust him because he's the father of my children. But otherwise, if you don't like musicals, I don't understand. Like, I just don't quite get I'm it. I'm not a huge oh, fan. I'm not yeah. a huge yeah. musical yeah. person. I'm not someone who's like, oh, it's a musical. I got to go see it. Yeah. Or I'll immediately love it because it's a musical. A lot of musicals I don't. Yeah, like the 80s Disney yeah. Like uh, Lion King. Yeah. I mean, that again, it's like the. I was going to say, it's like the SEX scenes I have to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, spell things, I spell things different in my children, so they're like, uh, we know how to spell. Yeah. Um, it's like those scenes where it's just really boring to me unless I like the music. So yeah. I would say Moana was a yeah. like surprising. I thought the music was great. I thought yeah. the song was great. I felt it was very, like, watching it with my daughter was very inspired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then again, it's Lin-Manuel Miranda, so the dude knows how to write a pop yeah. song or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, write a song that yeah. speaks to me, at least, yeah. or something. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, like, all musicals, no. I can't get into the lentil. I can't get into the Barbra Streisand oh. genre. I mean, I just oh. get Did you like Cabaret? Bored. Yeah, I love Cabaret. Oh, I Cabaret's not on my list. It should yeah. be. I love Cabaret. But I love the... the one from the 60s, right? Yeah, yeah well, that's been, the only one I no, know of. Well, the Liza one. one. No, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. No, Liza Minnelli, yeah. is what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but isn't there a remake with, or has it just been revived? They've just been talking about it as, they I thought probably, there was with, what's his name? I think they do Well, oh, Alan Cummings. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Is he just and doing it on stage? Yes. I thought there was a movie. Yeah, okay. There was a revival on Broadway, and by the mm-hmm. way, Alan Cummings is brilliant. Oh, he's great. Yeah. I love Alan Cummings. So good. And then, but they they had a British woman playing Sally Bowles, which was, um, 
which was fine. I mean, yeah. it worked. But I, you know, I just, I was so used to Liza's yeah. voice. American. Hearing yeah. a British voice sing was a little off-putting. Well, now they're doing a lot of the TV remakes. So, like, they just, like, Will Vern Cox did Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yes. And oh, they yes. did a remake of The Wiz. Yes. And, you know, they're just doing all those kind of yeah. um, live TV performance right. things now. So. Oh, that brings to mind Dream Girls. I forgot oh, yeah, about that's Dream a great Girls. Oh, that's a good Jennifer yeah. Hudson's performance yeah. in Dream Girls, I think, that vocal performance just... Didn't she mm-hmm. outshine, was it Beyonce? Beyonce, Beyonce. Yeah. she did. Like she outshined Beyonce and that was like Yeah, crazy. she did. And it was so good. But even that, like, Manny goes, this woman is screaming at me. I'm like, no, it's just like one of the great vocal performances. Like, try to do that. Mm-hmm. You uh, cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dream Girls was really good. Yeah, yeah and I just, one. artistically, I don't know, like, just taking a song and, you know, and you're, but you're, uh, the magic of the moving picture with yeah. song, I, it just has such hmm. an effect. I don't know why people don't love the musical. I think it's some people, it's like going to the opera. Like, they appreciate the arts and the you know, amazing vocal talents, but well, it's not your thing. Yeah. yeah. Or the really ballet. <laughs> or a ballet. I'm so I only have three picks, yeah. and mine aren't traditional. One is traditional. I love The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You Wait, you're going, giving it away right now? Well, technically, oh, if you know the fast. format yeah, of the yeah, show, I, everyone I already know knows. <laughs> Thanks for breaking I the wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I knew that about you. I love you. I'm so happy I did Okay, well, so... Everybody. Well, I'm glad. I'm going to tell you now, so in case, you've already fast forwarded. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> fast forwarded. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Fame. I really like Fame, uh, fame from 1980. Yeah. yeah. I did that musical in high school. Yeah. On stage. And the Blues Brothers, because it's not oh, traditional, but it's a musical. Well, that's a good song. I've yeah. never seen it. You've yeah. never seen the Blues Brothers. Oh. Never seen the Blues Brothers. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. see the original. Yeah. Don't see the remake or yeah. the sequel. Uh, yeah. But yeah, James Brown does Aretha Franklin, oh, John Lee wow. Hooker, uh, Ray Charles, oh, Cap Calloway. Oh, that was just the Belushi no. brothers doing SNL stuff. No, I mean they were in it. It oh. is but, originally an SNL bit. Yeah. but then it becomes a movie. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, no, it just the old R and B soul music is all there. It's worth it just for that. I mean the the story's fun, but the uh, yeah. um, it's great music. It's, it's, too. Great, it's music. great music, yeah. Aww. So it's you have to see the Blues Brothers. Well done, yes. well done. So there you go. <laughs> so is that that it? That's yes. all. I only have one pick. I'm okay, sorry. guys, you can well now you can turn it off because Lindley won't listen past this. Now. <laughs> 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 no, but you have to listen to Maylin's story. Like the thing that I said I hate soundtracks. That was a lie. I do not fast forward <laughs> through other people's interviews. I listen to the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you, James. Right. <laughs> All right. For this week's episode, we got Brian P. back. Welcome back. Hello. So we're going to do musicals. Um, I don't know if you're a big show tune guy or not. Uh, but... <laughs> not really. I mean, there are musicals that I like, sure. but I'm not like, oh, I'm so into musicals. No, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not me. Um, we have a good mix I, this week, because I think you and I are pr- kind of the same, like a few, but then we have yeah. major hardcore musical people, yeah, which is kind of good. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with musicals. I just said... Sometimes I can't stand singing, and other times, like, it's really good, and I, it all comes together, and I like the movie. Uh-huh. So um, you have four picks this yeah, week. Yeah, so. so I have four picks. Um, let me just refer to my list. Sure. So I don't get off track too much. Um, so, I, I mean, I kind of like a lot of the, kind of, the, or, well, some of the, like, the most famous musicals, and mm-hmm. I'm not even considering these always my favorite, but, like, West Side Story. Sure. Sound of Music is really good. Um I don't know. Those are just two examples. Um, but my favorite all time is Singing in the Rain. Yeah. Um, I think it's just really funny. I like the dancing. Gene Kelly's good. Uh, Donald O'Connor is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously just, Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds yeah. is great. And I, th- I like the idea that it's kind of like this meta musical. I they they put it together based on songs that they had the rights to or that they used in other musicals, and they just threw threw the movie together oh, based, on, based around those songs. Didn't know that. Okay. And then the whole idea of Debbie Reynolds supplying the voice for Gene Hagen's character was a little bit ironic because Gene Hagen actually did her own singing, even though Debbie Reynolds was supposed to be singing for her. In right. The, her character was singing for her in the movie. <laughs> so it's just, I think Debbie Reynolds sang on one song. Mm-hmm. I can't, it might have been Singing in the Rain or I'm not sure. Or not Singing in the Rain, but... um. The one, the duet she does. Mm-hmm. I can't think of the song. Oh, well, <laughs> not that singing, <laughs> come to me. not that singing in the rain ever went out of style, but really since she passed, Debbie Reynolds, I think more and more people are going back and watching it. Yeah, and, I mean that's know. one of her signature movies. Absolutely, I'm sure. and, and that's like, too. Oh, totally. I, people forget how big Debbie Reynolds was. I mean, yeah. before she was just the mom of of uh, yeah Princess Leia. Yeah, she's <laughs> so, yeah. huge. I mean, yeah. I at one time looked at an old collection of like their pop culture magazines from. The 60s mm-hmm. when 
uh, Debbie Reynolds and Andy Fisher were married, and yeah. then it had the stuff about like their divorce. And it was just oh, kind of yeah. like how they were like the it couple back they then. They were the Brangelina. Of, yeah, they were pretty much Brangelina. So, yeah. yeah. I like that movie a lot. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's why I was kind of upset during the past Oscars. Like, they just glossed over Debbie Reynolds. And they almost glossed over Carrie Fisher, too, which was yeah, kind of... Yeah, I didn't kind see of the odd. Oscars at all. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of surprising that they glossed over uh, Yeah, because that, to me, they're, you know, the, the yeah. power people yeah. <laughs> in Hollywood. So. For sure. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, you never know. I That thing, that, that the memorial memorial thing was yeah. kind of weird. Sometimes they just gloss over people. Totally. Like, it was like, what? Wait. Yeah. yeah, and then, then the, and just whoever the flavor of the month, like, they'll give a ton of time to Prince, which, fine, it's Prince, but he was in one yeah, or two one, movies. Yeah, yeah one, one notable movie. Yeah, and, yeah he, you know, a great musician, but you don't think of him as an actor, so. Exactly. Not, not a movie person. Anyway, so, yeah. um, another movie is, this is Spinal Tap, and that's really not for the for the music, because yeah. I think the music's supposed to be bad, and it's, it's ridiculous. Bad. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous, yeah. you know, rock, heavy metal, whatever uh -huh. you want to call it. Um but it's you know it's 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 for everything but the music. Totally. Yeah. But it, it it's important you have the music in there, so that's I guess what makes it a musical. Well, anything with a song like Big Bottom and and uh, <laughs> with the whole Stonehenge. The Stonehenge yeah. thing was <laughs> great, and it was miniaturized. And, yeah. It was being it was at risk yeah. of being stopped by a dwarf. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's just great lines. The whole the. The part where he's showing us off his guitar and his amps, you know, like, oh, yeah, this course. one goes to another. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Why not just make 10, 11 and then have that? But, yeah. but, but this goes to 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christopher Guest is brilliant. Oh. I mean, and even Rob Reiner, too. Uh, that's just a great. Yeah, because he plays the straight man. Right? Yeah, yeah. he's just there, you know, the, the director of the documentary. Yeah, well, since this is now. happening after Cult Classics, I think number three or four was Spinal Tap for me. Yeah, I, I mean, I think yeah. if I, yeah, I don't remember, I didn't talk about a list on my Cult Classics, mm -hmm. but that's definitely on oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got to be. Um, let's see. Next would be the Blues Brothers, which. That's my number one. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome musical. And not really like a musical, like you think of a show tune mm -hmm. kind of musical, but, you know, great soundtrack because they got all those blues and. Yeah. Soul and soul music. singers, yeah. That's and then the plot is just kind of crazy and funny. And mm -hmm. Carrie Fisher, oh, to the, speaking of, yeah, she's got a great cameo in that movie. Um, you know, it's always great when you have like eight million people cha that are kind of like the the antagonists of the bad guys, including yeah. including a group of neo Nazis. That's out of right. Nowhere. They just, they just I hate Illinois piss, Nazis. They just <laughs> manage to piss off everyone along oh, yeah. the way, and they're doing this terrible. Thing, right, or you don't even know sometimes because they're kind of you know. Yeah, there's a they kind of blur the lines, yeah. but they definitely were on a mission from God. They're, they're so, anti-heroes, yeah. but they're yeah, they're absolutely. Cool. But yeah, the music doesn't take away of anything. It kind of um, it's fun with the plot because yeah, it actually know, it's yeah. it adds to it. I think in, mm -hmm. in a way because I like I went back and watched that movie. I don't know, maybe within the last year or so, mm -hmm. and and I was yeah, I I had forgotten how good the music was. I think the first time I saw it, it was. I don't know. Like I, I think I liked it, and then like every time I watch it now, I think it just gets gets better, better and better. better. Yeah, because it's a long movie yeah, too. Yeah, it's so, pretty long, yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just it's brilliant. But even like the scene, like they're funny because like Aretha Franklin's, you know, she's at a yeah. restaurant, and all of a sudden the the, the the diners are singing with her yeah, and, and yeah. everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, James Brown as a preacher is always, always yeah, great. that's perfect. Yes. <laughs> I always loved that when Ray. Living. Oh yeah, <laughs> when Jane, when uh, Ray Charles, he's the owner of the the music store, yeah. and the kid's trying to steal some, something, and he shoots a gun at him, like, <laughs> right. like he, it's like almost perfect, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's just, yeah it's they make fun of themselves in the movie. And oh, it's pretty, yeah. yeah, it's great. Really well done cameos. Mm -hmm. Cab Calloway. Oh yeah, and you see that, you have an old jazz singer in, mm -hmm. in amongst all the you know more contemporary people. Yeah, the, yeah, they are, yeah. And uh, that song, Minnie the Moocher, it's still played in stadiums. Oh yeah, 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 that exact version from the Blues Brothers. That's right. Yeah. The, the call that live one. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So yeah, Blues Brothers, awesome, great movie. one. And, yeah. Um, and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Um, I like. Danny Elfman a lot, mm -hmm. and his you know he did the music, the soundtrack for that movie. So um, I thought it's just like a great combination of the music and the visuals and interesting story. Yeah, Tim Burton's you know you get a lot of Tim Burton's aesthetic with it. I, you know I I used to like Tim Burton stuff a lot more, and I think lately he's kind of gone downhill as a mm -hmm. well he didn't direct that movie, but he he created it. But I think generally I'm not. I would say I used to be a huge Tim Burton fan. I guess I'm just a, a big fan of his older stuff. Right. And then lately, he's just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny how Take leave most of his stuff is almost, it's like, they're like cult classics. Man, yeah, Beetlejuice. Yeah. yeah. 
and uh, Edward Scissorhands yeah. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's hard for him because he it's almost like he's so quirky that yeah. the quirkiness is no longer quirky. You know, it's just yeah, I think I think the thing that worked in that, that movie's favor is that it was really short. I think it's like right. an hour and fifteen minutes long. Hour Typical Disney minutes. movie. Yeah. yeah, even shorter than some of the Disney movies. And yeah. You know, you can't, like, there's not a lot to the whole story. No. And it doesn't go on and on. I think, like, some of Tim Burton's movies have done. They've yeah. just gotten a little off track. Um, but it's, like, the epitome of his, his, his aesthetic. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> Hard to say. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's... Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great one. I love how that Disneyland now takes uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, yeah I, saw, yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they, they, I think they turned the Haunted Mansion into... Yeah, unless yeah. I have some people are the... Are, are Disneyland purists and I understand that too. I get if you it. go there for that experience sure. I understand but um, yeah I'm, I'm for changing it up right now. yeah and I think as long as they weave some of the stuff that's kind yeah, of yeah I think for the most part it was and then they just added certain things to the, mm-hmm. to the ride and I almost just, think that eventually we're kind of going off on a tangent here but yeah. I think eventually they may just you know how they have a California Adventure they may have like a classic Disney section eventually where they just bring back all the old stuff and then oh, put right. it in one park and yeah. then you can have all the new stuff and then one thing they don't sure. need to bring back is the old submarine line. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot the, about the new one, The new one with yeah. me was not much better. No. It's, yeah. it's better, but not much better. It's not worth the line. People you would think don't, with all... Don't stand in line. No. Time unless you have a little kid that I know. wants to go. <laughs> and the whole fast pass thing isn't yeah. even fast. So. Yeah. But again, great job, Brian. Yeah, Thank thanks. you so yeah, much. Good to be here. Thanks. <laughs> well, you hear the giggle, so you know who it must be. Danielle. You said, why don't you... Is no, I said on three, yeah. and I said one three. Yeah. Well. I was supposed to be laughing. I, I failed uh, okay. adding and, oh, and counting I when forgot. I was... Oh, that's... I forgot, yes. Yes. Because okay. you make fun of me of being a broadcasting major. Yeah, that's... Because okay. math would have been totally appropriate for hosting a podcast. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay, let's get into your favorite musicals this week. Okay. You said you had one, two, three... <laughs> right? Or you, know, you had two. I don't know how many. Well, we're going to find out how many you have. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the, the microphone is yours. I have none. I don't have like enough. You have none? <laughs> I, I think musicals are so stupid. It should be only this. Why are you on this episode no, then? No, but I have like exceptions uh, that I accept being. <laughs> I think she's going I last. I want to add it to this. <laughs> no, this is actually the best part, probably, of the interview. So we'll put this at the end. So, um... Go oh, ahead. Oh, no one on the end. Don't mix oh, my Oh, and voice. now create uh, control if you want. <laughs> so I like the... Okay, translate to English to me. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera. You, that's perfect English. Right? Yeah. The, uh, I like the 19... I don't know, 50. Two, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. The, it's not the first one. I think the twenty third. So you don't want the silent version with Lon Chaney Jr. The or two, sorry, Lon Chaney Sr. Two thousand four. There's the there's the more recent recent one. I watch it. So it's wh- fine. Wh- which one do you actually like? I mean, uh, any because they don't change. They start as much, and there's always singing. So they good singers. <laughs> but uh, I like this story mm-hmm. of. You know the whole story, and oh, once for a uh, mask masquerade ball, I mm-hmm. dress myself as the Phantom of the Opera. Really? Yeah, I love it. I had the mask. The mask I had it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I already did that oh, joke. Oh, so you. funny! Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> why the mask, Danielle? Okay, so there were the original one in well, there was one in 1916, but it's been lost. Yeah. The one in 1925 is the Lon Chaney Senior one. That's the silent version. Yeah. Th- this the one from 1943 is in color. I think I think it's the 43, Probably. and I, I watched the uh, 2004. Uh huh. It was okay. It's not as, it's not that bad. So you didn't like the 1998 one? Oh no, never mind. Nobody's even seen that. So okay, it's it's beautiful. The story is beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's still I I don't like it. It I would love to watch in Broadway. I never watch it, but it that like would be perfect for Broadway. As for a movie, it's too long. It's too much music. It's you realize this is your favorite musical. Well, it would be wor- Do you want to see my worst? <laughs> <laughs> I think we just started. Do you want to see my worst? No, no, it's like Into the Woods. That's a stupid movie. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so you have Phantom Opera. You yes, like and my, my favorite. No, this one is my favorite. I didn't know it was a musical. Mm-hmm. 
all the you know is Mary Poppins. Oh yeah, definitely. It's so I love Julia Andrews. I mm -hmm. love the sound of the music yep. too. But I mean Mary Poppins. I love all the songs. You know, I love the how to say the character, the, the her, the, the choreography. No, not the choreography. Well, there is great choreography with her and Dick oh, Van Dyke. Oh, the penguins. Yeah, Dick yeah Van Dyke. that is super yeah. cute. Yeah. No, but. Uh, her her persona how do you say like yeah persona yeah her character so yes. yeah there we go <laughs> i cannot say that word <laughs> so uh yes i love it and i'm a big fan of mary poppins like, when i go to disney i need to see mary poppins <laughs> she's like a real person do you get her autograph like I the cats do. do you get her autograph i do and i get a picture stop of course i do <laughs> she's i understand why the kids get autographs no they don't care about mary poppins it's only me no no no. but you realize that it's not the real mary poppins but i take pictures of her i love it so when you go to see santa do you get his autograph too <laughs> <Shut up>. <laughs> <laughs> no it was fun the first time i went to disney uh clara was 18 months old uh -huh. and i saw mary poppins you know walking and i was like oh, mary poppins <laughs> It's not even Julia Andrews, or Mary Poppins. <laughs> Did you get her autograph then too? No, but she okay. start. They start singing, right? She and you know the guy. They start doing the um, the Super Califragilistic song. Yeah, that's and, very good. I that I know. I that's that my English. English. Yeah. <laughs> that's my level. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was so, and I had my uh, no. It was what two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the iPhones and stuff yeah, with yeah. camera yet, mm -hmm. so I had my little thing. Flip like, phone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I started recording and I was super happy. I was like, yeah, I'm so in front. You know, how come no one is here watching? Because they're like in the middle of the, there's a space that they have shows. Yeah, not yeah. inside the building, but you know. They, On the street. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're like waving and talking, you know, and they have all the video for that. And then when I look back, actually, there is a rope around and I was inside. <laughs> So they're like this crazy lady is trying to join the cast. <laughs> oh my god! So I was inside. Claire was sleeping in the in the stroller, like she was eighteen months old. She didn't care. So and so I was security so didn't escort no, you. No, they out. didn't because they thought she has a problem. Just <laughs> let her be there. <laughs> and I was like slowly, you know, yeah. going back, but I, I didn't cross the rope. I still inside the, the thing. <laughs> I have the video to prove. I think they put your photo up in the police section. Like, don't let this lady between the, but the I, I love the movie. I love the spoof out of sugar, anything yeah. to happen, you know, all the songs. All the songs. Yes. Not too much on the um, Dove songs, but the mm -hmm. rest, it's it's very cute. Okay. So, it, I think that, quali that that's a great pick. Do you have any of other? Of course it qualifies. Oh, it. It, it, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your Wikipedia. Everything's there. <laughs> True. It's correct. <laughs> so that's your main pick. That is the only pick, actually. I think that's a great pick. I'm gonna after I'm done with this, I'm gonna give you my autograph. So I don't need it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for offering. <laughs> Mary Poppins autograph. Yeah. yeah. Get your breath. <laughs> you can take off your your fan of the opera mask oh, now. <laughs> that was so nice. <laughs> Okay, Samantha's back. Hello. And we're going to do musicals this week. And so we have some people that are kind of into musicals, but not. And then we have some very enthusiastic people. So where would you lie in the music cat musical category? I, for a while, I was a big musical mm -hmm. fan. I really liked watching all the classic ones, like with Fred Astaire and Gene yeah. Kelly. I went through a huge phase. So I really love those. I'm not a big like Disney musical fan, okay. so I won't mention those. Um, <laughs> People yeah. definitely did, so that's good. We okay. get the other side. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not a big Disney fan. Like yeah, I watched Mulan a million times sure. when I was like, younger, but and Beauty and the Beast, uh -huh. but they they were fine. Yeah. But there's a few like other movies that I really love, mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of. Tried to I picked I categorized them but okay so I picked like one of my favorites from childhood okay then I picked my favorite classic film mm -hmm. I picked a couple new ones okay, like good. last like fifteen years or so and then a couple foreign ones perfect I like people that are so. organized and, <laughs> and this is gonna be good so start wherever you want to start so I think yeah like 
I think going off of the whole Disney thing, like I did, I was a kid when all the like classic Disney films yeah. came out. Um, but my one of my favorite movies as a kid, I think I might have mentioned it before. Here actually was Annie. Yeah, and um, I loved it. I actually saw it um, performed live recently, oh, nice. and it was a treat. Mm -hmm. I just love the whole storyline. The music is really cute. And I loved um, the version. So it's the version from the 80s. So in, I think it's 1981? Yeah. Because I had like yeah. the VHS or whatever. Um, and it's with, um, what's her face? Carol Burnett. Yes. She plays Miss Hannigan. She's mm -hmm. hilarious. I She's kind of terrifying. But the movie's <laughs> so funny. Just the kids are really cute. And um, it's just such a treat. Mm -hmm. I, and it still holds up today. So, it does. Yeah. They play it on TV once in a while, oh, yeah. and I'll still watch yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is from, like, Broadway, so it has that feel where sure. there's no really, di like, there's dialogue and plot, but everything kind of falls into a song eventually. Sure. And, yeah, so that's a great one. Uh -huh. Um, You're the first one, first person to mention oh, that one, so Annie. good job. Oh my gosh. And when I saw it live recently, they had an actual real dog Whoa. playing uh -huh. Sandy. Mm -hmm. And it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Was this in, in your theater? No, no, I saw it in San Jose. Okay. Actually. Oh, cool. And it was, they trained the dog to like run across the stage <laughs> and like pretend to be hungry and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's was cool. The cutest thing. Anyway, side note. <laughs> <laughs> you want everyone that wants to adopt that dog. Oh. Um, so. Yeah, so anyway, so that's kind of like a personal favorite classic mm -hmm. movie. Um, and then my kind of all-time, one of the movies I kind of just generally love is Funny Face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with Audrey Hepburn and Fred, Ast Fred Astaire. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've like watched a million of his movies. And this is actually one of the later musicals he did because mm -hmm. he was like big in the 30s. Um, and so this came out in the late fifties, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was pretty fresh into her career Yeah. and, um, he was like 30 years older than her, I right. think. And they ended up becoming like love interests and falling in love at the end. Um, but that seemed to happen to Audrey Hepburn a lot. Cause the same thing happened in charade with Carrie Grant. Yeah, yeah. All the, all the yeah. young actresses yeah. fell in love with them then 30 years older than yes. them. Yes. <laughs> In the 50s and 60s, it was so lovely. <laughs> but, yeah, this movie, I really like it. I kind of, I watched it when I was a teenager, and mm -hmm. I'm, like, a big, like, a fashion, like, Francophile uh -huh. purse. Like, I was kind of obsessive. And the movie's based in Paris. Um, have you seen it before? Uh, oh, a long time ago. Long time I've definitely ago. seen it, yeah. Yeah, so it's based in Paris, and she's basically, Audrey Hepburn's character is discovered by a photographer, mm -hmm. and... They send her out to Paris to do some photo shoots. Yes. She kind of becomes like this new look. Um, Fred Astaire's character is actually based off of a real fashion photographer. Oh, I didn't and, know um, Yeah, so they film like actually in Paris. So a lot of the scenery is really pretty. Um, when I was there a few years ago, I actually found like the bridge. Where... Did you get pictures? Then? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> One of the bridges, like uh -huh. where they are. Um and yeah, I just really liked her clothes in the movie. There's a song called Think Pink. Mm -hmm. um, and she gets like a makeover and it's it's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Um, but it's, if, yeah, I, not everyone would enjoy it. But if you like... <laughs> well, if you like Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> if you like probably, Audrey Hepburn, yeah. cutesy musicals. I don't even know if she sings the songs. It's like in My Fair Lady, she didn't sing. Did they make a commercial out of... Funny, like, yes. yes. It was a Gap yes. commercial. Yeah. I think I bought the pants because yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to dress like her. <laughs> so I just remember inter interweaving into other songs and things like that. But I think mm -hmm. it was based on her yeah. performance. Yeah. There's a pop, there's a scene in that movie where she's um, kind of like dressed like a beatnik yeah. and she's dancing in this jazz club. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, they took that for a Gap commercial yeah. like <laughs> 10 years ago uh -huh. or so. Um, yeah, that was funny. It, it was like right during the height of my Audrey Hepburn obsession. So then you were perfect. And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> Going straight to Gap. Oh, can't um, buy that I always stuff. Get, used to get that confused with Funny Girl because of the name, oh, yeah. but obviously it's completely different. They're and different. Barbara Streisand's and Funny Girl about Fanny Bryce. So yeah, yeah, and yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's a great one too. Yeah. I love Barbara Streisand. Mm -hmm. I like her her movies. Um, yeah, so I think I don't think I have anything else to add there. Okay. Um, 
And then a couple foreign movies, mm -hmm. so from the same time period. They're, um, I don't know if I've mentioned them here before, but there's two with um, Catherine Deneuve. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from when she was really, really young. Mm -hmm. They're called The Umbrellas of Cherbourg and The Young Girls of Rochefort. Mm -hmm. And they were both with her and her sister. Mm -hmm. Her sister actually died, like when she was in her 20s, like oh. right after these movies were made, she mm -hmm. died in a car accident. Wow. It was very tragic. Mm -hmm. And so both of these movies came out, same director, um, Jacques Demy, and they are really kind of artistically made, so mm -hmm. that um, caters to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all like pastel uh -huh. and not a very realistic um, look, okay. but they are, yeah, really just old-fashioned musicals. They sing basically the entire time, mm -hmm. lots of silly dancing. <laughs> and uh, The Umbrella of Cherbourg is actually, it's a very, it's a great movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's really quite sad, actually. It's mm. not your traditional kind of like happy-go-lucky happy yeah. musical. With, and it's, but it's so like bright and beautiful, but it's actually kind of sad at, at the end mm -hmm. and uh, from what I remember, I think the movie, they sing the entire time. Oh, okay. So there's really not much dialogue. Uh -huh. It's like sing talking. So and you're okay with that? Like that doesn't bother you? No. Okay, good. No, no, no. Because everyone, I've had different sides who absolutely adore it and others are like, me. If it so, works, if okay. it works. Sure. Like, and because they weren't actually like songs, like typical songs. Okay. It was just kind of like musical. Mm -hmm. talking it's a very strange movie it's really great i think mm -hmm. it actually um when i was reading reviews about la la land mm. people were saying like this is definitely inspired by the umbrellas of Cherbourg. i haven't seen la la land okay. but any fans of that i think should watch this because right. it's french kind of a similar look old school musical okay um and kind of there's a romance in there. That's good to know. And so those are my two foreign okay. favorites. They're kind of similar, um, but they kind of, they pretty much go together. Uh -huh. I think if you see one, it's worth seeing the other one. And that's a nice tie-in with La La Land because it's a recent one, but you haven't seen it. Yeah. So what are the recent ones that um, you really like? Oh, so a couple recent ones. Um, I added Chicago sure. in here. Has uh -huh. anyone brought that oh, up? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. okay. Because yeah. so that's one of the... Like, because musicals aren't really a thing anymore. No. Like, 70 years ago, they only made musicals. Mm -hmm. And now, like, really, there was La La Land, which, that was really surprising, I think, yeah. how popular that was. And I think Chicago was the other more recent musical yeah. that, like, won Academy Awards and Mulan stuff. Mulan Rouge, maybe? Mulan Rouge. Oh, I hated Mulan yeah. Rouge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, Les Mis, the remake of Les Mis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That did mm -hmm. do okay. I didn't like that one either. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's almost like the Western genre. Like, yeah. it seemed like there was a period where it was nonstop Westerns, and then it just yeah. kind of stopped. Yeah, And then it kind of comes back every now and then. You mm -hmm. get a few more, and they There's do really cycles. well. Yeah. And so I think maybe we'll start seeing more musicals because of the La La Land success. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. And, yeah, I think there was, like, a big... There was just, yeah, Chicago... Mm -hmm. um, and Moulin Rouge, but there was like there's there wasn't much there. Right. So I think yeah, Chicago really stuck out to me. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just funny and yeah, filled a void. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I really liked that movie. Um, uh, I really liked. The, what was the one with Cher and Christina Aguilera? You're asking the wrong person. I, I know was, what it is, but I haven't seen it. Called it. Burlesque. It was I it's called think Burlesque? so. Yeah, yeah. That, that Did was... that wasn't that a that was that a remake recently? Maybe I, I just remember being at a drive-in. and I remember. Like, the, the screen next to the movie we were actually watching um, had burlesque on it. Yeah, so. it came out in 2010. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I forgot that happened. <laughs> I'm not sure if it did well or not. but I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but Chicago, I really loved that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was funny in that movie, like, John C. Riley. I yeah. really loved his character. I thought it was yeah. bizarre. Yeah. Um, well, you, you must like him because he's in a lot of the Will Ferrell movies, and that's oh, one of your guilty oh, pleasure yeah. actors, yes. <laughs> oh, tie it all back. <laughs> We're going to go highbrow <laughs> to, to lowbrow, but yeah. Yeah, so Chicago, and then one more to throw in. Yeah. Um, my last movie is, um, it's not technically a musical. Like I was kind of torn when coming up with movies for this because there's traditional musicals where the plot is musically based, where they're singing mm -hmm. most of it, and then there's 
music movies. Right. But I wanted to include the movie Once. Oh, okay. Into this mm -hmm. because it is a music movie, so it's about a musician, mm -hmm. but the majority of the movie is sung, and then it was turned into a musical after the fact. Mm. So, um, have you heard about this before? I haven't. Before? I haven't. It's a lovely, lovely movie. When did it come it, out? Uh, tw what, 2007 or okay. so? 2008. Um, and it actually won, I think, the Oscar for Best Song. Okay. And that's how I heard about it. I saw them perform it at the Academy was, Awards. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. Uh -huh. What is this? <laughs> um, and yeah, it came out in 2007. So it probably was the 2008 Oscars. Oscars. Uh -huh. And um, this uh, director, it's an Irish movie. It was filmed like a documentary. Mm. And the main character is just this guy who likes to play music out on the streets. And he meets this woman. Mm -hmm. They're both kind of not... She's like an immigrant, and they kind of um, start playing music together and fall in love, mm -hmm. and it's a little sad. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really nice, nice movie. I never saw the um, the adaptation when it was turned into mm -hmm. a Broadway production, but I heard it was pretty good. Okay. And um, yeah, really great movie. This director actually has made a couple more since then. Non-musical um, or musical? More all musical oh, based. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's really great. His name's John Carney, mm -hmm. and I think this might have been his first movie, um, or at least it went popular. I just pulled it up on Wikipedia, uh -huh. and it was made for a budget of one hundred and twelve thousand dollars wow. or pounds. So, and he, I'm sure, reaped it all. We got it all back mm -hmm. after the Oscar. That's the thing. Once you're nominated for an Oscar, you can forever use that in the publicity of your next film. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a phenomenal movie. And then he went on to make, um, I think, Begin Again. Mm -hmm. It came out a couple years ago with Keira Knightley and Mark Ruffalo. Oh. So mm -hmm. got some yeah. A-list actors. And then he just made another movie called Sing Street. It's on Netflix right Oh, I now. have heard about that. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. was Probably one of my favorite movies of last uh -huh. year. Oh, nice. But it's again, it's not really a musical. Mm -hmm. It's about these kids who want to be in a rock band. Mm. So they, you know, they play music. Okay. So maybe and, that's why I've heard of it. Because <laughs> it's uh -huh. not your traditional musical. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Another Irish movie. Yeah. Unknown cast. And I think, yeah, he's definitely a director I'm following right now. Cool. Because if he makes something else. Yeah. Well, again, great job. You split the genres or the you, you grouped it great. And uh, so go and check these out if you haven't seen them. Thanks, Samantha. All right, bye. Okay, we're back with Malin. And for this week's episode, we're going to talk about our favorite musicals on film. Yeah. So I'm curious to hear what your list is this week. Yeah, me too. I'm not <laughs> sure. Because <laughs> I got you on the um, spot here. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I've developed a love-hate relationship with musicals, which I didn't used to have. It used to be kind of pure love. Right. Because it's... I mean, musical cinema is such a preposterous kind of format. Like, in general, like, you really have to suspend, like, all of your disbelief mm -hmm. to go in and buy the, these people in whatever situation. Just, you know, have the time uh -huh. to think of all these ornate lyrics and <laughs> songs and just belt into whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, so I've kind of lost my suspension of disbelief in the last like 10 years because mm -hmm. I saw a really horrible musical mm -hmm. um, and it shook me out of like the illusion. But um, trying to get back into it. Yeah. I just recently saw Hamilton and it's kind of... Um, it's only a matter of time before that comes up feature film I'm sure oh I know yeah. the, the potential for it yeah. is amazing I don't know how long it'll take but yeah. it's I think it's inevitable sure um, but so so I, I was thinking about the musicals that uh, I did love mm -hmm. as a kid I mean this is all about memories right of so course. I, was, I have to think back before my heart turn to coal. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I did like musicals with abandon. Um, I've already talked about true stories and little shop of horrors more than once. Yeah. And but, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I mean, that's, yeah. Okay. And Rocky Horror Picture yeah. Show. They made this list, but I'm just going to throw them out there at the top. Because, sure. Um, It'll yeah. be in our cult. It, it is They'll in our be, cult. Film. Yeah. yeah. But they're elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So when I was a kid, I was trying to think, which was the first mu movie musical that I saw that I really loved? And it was either Mary Poppins, Wizard of Oz, or... God, what would be the other one? Mary Poppins, Wizard of Oz. Oh, there's another one I kind of 
think of as associated with being a kid. But anyway, mm-hmm. Mary Poppins, God, didn't everybody want, like, Julie yeah. Andrews to sure. come out of the sky and, like, take care yeah. of, like, all of your bad habits? Sure. And basically clean up your room <laughs> with an umbrella. Well, just she, she, she was she was motherly, but she could be forceful. It's just like she had the whole range of you know. Of I just wanted the magic bits. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to go into this cartoon world with her and uh-huh. have her clean my room. Sure. That was it. That was it. Okay. Well, <laughs> and, and, and have and have you know medicine taste like cherries. Well, yes, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, I'll throw in my story. My parents will appreciate this. So wait, my parents. For I believe their anniversary, when I was five or six years old, um, went to Hawaii, and so we were taken care of by a nanny. Well, this nanny was a truck driver who took, and she was the complete antithesis of Mary Poppins. <laughs> and oh, that was that left my sister and I scarred for because we were in her care for at least a week, but it felt like a month. And I tell you, I appreciate my parents a whole lot more when they came <laughs> home. So maybe that was their plan all along. But yeah, no Mary Poppins in that one. So, yeah, when I was yeah. a kid, I had a babysitter. And I just remember my sister and I crying on the doorstep of the base as my mom's yeah. like, dropping us off uh-huh. and going off to teach at school. Um, and we just, it's not like we didn't see it coming every day. It's just as soon as we got to the doorstep, don't leave us. <laughs> now, if our babysitter had been Mary Poppins, we would sure. been like, don't just, pick us up. Just leave us <laughs> there. Yeah. Just leave us. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean um, that's. A, but going back to the musical part, I mean it is yeah. an iconic movie and an Absolutely. iconic musical. So. Absolutely. Um, oh, and I started remembering the other ones. Okay, yeah. the other ones are uh, Wizard of Oz, yep. which was kind of like that annual holiday film. Yeah. Which is weird, but that's the only way I ever saw it as a kid was it would come on TV. Usually Thanksgiving and, or something like that. Yeah, yeah something mm-hmm. like that. Um, and that was that was always fun to wait for, and uh, never missed it. No, never no. missed it. Sound of Music. That was another one. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember also in like third grade when they were tar- starting to teach us music in school, um, they ripped out like uh, choral books for Sound of Music bits, and that was mm-hmm. so exciting. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. That was really exciting. <laughs> Much more exciting for me than it should have been. Right. But that's yeah. okay. <laughs> so The Sound of Music, and that's what, Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews in that one, too? Yeah. yeah. Actually, Julie Andrews musicals, I guess maybe I should just say. She could have her own yeah. subject, yeah. Because then there's Victor Victoria. Yep. And that's pretty fantastic. Yep. I just remember that right now. Um, well, she's one of those, you know, back in the old school days where you, you had to pretty much be a dual threat, where she could... She's right. a singer, she's an amazing singer, plus she was a great actress, kind of like Doris Day. So. She was everything. Yeah. Julie Andrews was everything. Yeah. Probably still is. She's just yeah, she's still, now. Yeah. But, but she, I think she was in the Princess Diaries with Anne Hathaway. That's right, more but, of a not, recent, but not in a singing no, capacity. No. Yeah. Her, her vocal cords. Mm-hmm. Of, That's guess, tough. <laughs> it for yeah. everyone, even the, the great singers. Then. I bet you, even if she can't sing as well as she could, she'd probably still sing circles oh, sure. around just about everybody and yeah. anybody. Agreed. Um, Oliver. Yeah. Lionel Bart. <laughs> this is like the archetype of all musicals. But as a kid, I just absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. That was a, that was a fun one. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah. The the uh, the one the one with um, Oliver Reed as mm-hmm. the big bad brute. I can't remember the name of the character. Mm-hmm. Um, but more importantly to me, uh, the guy who played Fagin, whose name I also can't remember, I'm completely useless this morning. <laughs> um, he was absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. He was just, yeah, I don't know, something about that character was just completely engrossing to mm-hmm. me as a kid. I mean, now I look back on it as an adult, I'm like, wow, that character was abusive and manipulative and probably a lot of other things Mm -hmm. happened off screen that we wouldn't even want to think about but okay you know as a kid totally suckered into it and the way that the character is written really has to be both obviously a horrible insidious person but then very tempting and attractive to kids in order to create this kind of um uh, colony of con. We will definitely do a subject where uh, movies that, that seem normal as kids but looking back are just creepier. There's things you just totally missed when you were a right. kid. Willy yeah. Wonka being the most 
uh, yeah, to me yeah, the yeah, obvious yeah. one. But, yeah. Yeah, there's another kind of quasi musical. Um, there's a lot of musical yeah. numbers in that one. So yeah. Well, yeah, I was thinking about like movies that have musical numbers but aren't necessarily musical. Sure. It's, it, and it's tempting to include Monty Python. I'm not oh, yeah. going to. Yeah, but all yeah. the Monty Python uh-huh. films, not necessarily musicals as films, but they have musical numbers in them that are unforgettable. Yeah. Each of them. So. Well, and way back when in old Hollywood, it seemed like there always was a clip of someone singing right. on stage. and. For whatever reason, like, Abbott and Costello used to drive me nuts because, because they would have like that interlude yes. where someone would be like in a bar, yeah, and the and, yeah, and you'd be like, wait, what does this have to do with exactly, right. <laughs> right. Or, like, uh. or like even the the uh, Marx Brothers, yeah, like, I remember like what it was at night in Casablanca, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like this really long, and yeah, anyway, so yeah, that was, <laughs> you but knew think, harp, uh, to play the harp and like, all right, those, right, yeah. right. but I think it it must have something to do with like cinema. And its roots in um, Broadway, Broadway theater yeah. and vaudeville, but and not just that, but then later like uh, nightclubs, yeah, scenes, mm-hmm. uh, including like Las Vegas. And it was like a variety right. show almost. Like, right, time you go to these club shows. Yeah, yeah. and so point. so film had a little bit more of that kind of variety aspect. Sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. As a kid watching these on TV, I was just like, okay. <laughs> I wish I could fast forward. Yeah. Right. It's like, <laughs> but now I can look back and be like, oh, well, that's a really cool kind of uh, insight into performing arts yeah. back then. But, but even but, like... But they're, and there are these little hidden pockets and always, comedies. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. would happen Horror in comedies. Films. It happened sometimes in just those uh, murder mystery thin man type movies. Yeah. Um, just like, okay, this is just... Obviously, <laughs> yeah. they needed to throw in a song here. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> this, uh, okay. So, mm-hmm. wait. So, nice Oliver. little change of pace here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so those were the ones I was obsessed with as a kid. Then later in life, Rocky Horror Picture Show. The, sure. Yeah, the perennial um, It Gets Better video for people before the It Gets Better videos. Um, <laughs> definitely was, listen to the cult classic uh, episode. Man, it's got some <laughs> fabulous stories about Rocky Horror Picture Show. And yeah, Pink so, Flamingos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, so after Rocky Horror Picture Show, is for like five minutes obsessed with Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I have a story about Hedwig and the Angry yeah, Inch, sure. Not the movie, no, but the, but the musical. Mm-hmm. I was obsessed with the movie, like I say, for about five minutes. It's a really kind of hit and miss movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a good example of where uh, a movie musical can go a little bit wrong, mm-hmm. where the film has to... You're, you're expected, I guess, as cinema to expand on the limits that the stage has for a musical. Mm-hmm. But if you go a little bit too far, you can end up with dead space. Yeah. And Hedwig and the Angry Inch is absolutely fantastic in terms of like the wittiness of the writing of it. Um, but it has some dead space, not just in terms of like uh, uh, space in the movie where things kind of lengthen out. Mm-hmm. I think it breathes too much. Mm-hmm. It should be more compact, mm-hmm. like the musical was. Um, but also just in like the cinematography of lots of emptiness that I don't know. It's a lot of other movie musicals don't. Some do. anyway, it kind of fell flat for me in some parts there. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I saw it on Broadway in the revival, um, NPH was playing Hedwig. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris was playing Hedwig. So um, my story. I'm a kind of a germaphobe. I don't know. I didn't know that. that. Yeah, okay. I'm a bit well, of a germaphobe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is foreshadowing. <laughs> no, so this is foreshadowing. Um, okay. And so I went and I saw this, and I was doing a, a Broadway safari in New York. I saw, uh, I was there for like a week, and I don't remember how many shows I saw, but the night that I saw Hedrick, that was one of, I think, five shows that I saw that day. Oh, wow. From like a 10 a.m. matinee to like a 12 p.m late show that's exhausting it's, it was yeah. so exhausting <laughs> um and it was my evening show oh god um okay. on on broadway and it, the, the 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 safari for that day was all over the place okay. it was like off broadway there was something in the public uh and then the last show was like this thing in a warehouse that was just fantastic total audience participation kind of thing mm-hmm. um and hedvig um goes through and it's this punk rock uh thingamajiggy um, if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. Sure. It's fantastic. Um, and there is a bit of uh, audience participation. Not that the audience members get to participate in any kind of active way. They're kind of acted upon. Um, <laughs> I was sitting orchestra center on the aisle, um, and you know, Patrick Harris comes down, and during this one song, kind of 
gives one audience member a lap dance. No, it wasn't that person, thank God. Um, <laughs> no, actually, it was worse. I shouldn't say thank God. Um, and then goes and, like, tussles some people's hair. Sure. When he gets to me, climbs up on top of the arm rests of the chair, sure, uh-huh. standing on it, kind of doing this dance above me with this um, skirt, okay. coming back down, licks my face ah. from chin to forehead. I'm kind of going, ah, open mouth. No, it was that. <laughs> so, I'm pretty and sure I got, t- I got, I think I got drips of sweat. It was so horrible. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> and you like Neil Patrick Harris, don't you? I mean, like, yeah, no, I like him. Yeah. No, so the funny thing is, when he was um, fu- when he was kind of in a lull in his like cinematic and television career, yeah. in between like Doogie and whatever, he was doing a lot of Broadway. Sure, so I was, saw him and stuff and thought he was wow, he's fantastic. Why isn't he bigger? Mm-hmm. Who, nobody seems to remember him. Right. I saw him in Rent a uh, long time ago. I think he was on the first touring American production. Yeah. And I saw him in that. And he was really, really fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then you got how, how Even better mother. than yeah. the... I'd seen the original Broadway production as well. And oh. he was actually better than the... Um, yeah, I'm sorry to say, because Anthony Rapp did a fantastic job, but NPH did mm. a bit better. Mm-hmm. I thought, more powerful performance. Maybe I just saw him and they were like, tired i don't know so um, was somebody taking a picture at least when this was god going no <laughs> i hope no 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 no, no it, it it makes me queasy because I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like oh god get away <laughs> so does he do this to every in every performance or you just happen to be that well, lucky i imagine one? that the interactions are improvised sure but i think the more or less pretty much roughly yeah. the same somebody obviously does. he's not a germaphobe because he's picking out right <laughs> yeah I, I know yeah i know uh, that's the, yeah. That's amazing. Well, I guess licking someone's face isn't the worst thing you could lick in this world. I suppose, but uh, yeah, germ germ wise, it probably close. Uh, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, uh, for another topic, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. We're, <laughs> um. All right. So. You never disappoint with the story, so I appreciate it. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I had to live through horror to get, bring you that story. <laughs> um. So. Hey, it's forever immortalized now. Um, okay, so other ones. Hairspray, John Waters. Oh, yeah, yeah. A musical. Yeah. So unlikely. And it's such a brilliant musical. It is. It's got, and I really appreciate the social commentary sure. in it, which is amazing. Now, I had seen that before I was familiar with any of other John Waters' work. I think many people, um, that was their intro yeah. into his work. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that's really the best way to do Absolutely. John Waters. Yeah. You should see Hairspray yeah. and think that he's just the most innocent, <laughs> social conscious musical director that there possibly could be. Right. And then you should go and you should see um, Multiple Maniacs. Is that one of his? Yeah, Multiple Maniacs mm-hmm. or uh, or uh, Dirty fl- Pink Flamingos. <laughs> dirty yeah, Flamingos. Yeah. Well, it is kind of Dirty or whatever. Flamingos. Yeah, and, and um, yeah. or Pink Flamingos. Yeah, yeah it's that's the best way to do yeah. it. Yeah. You can't start with Pink Flamingos because actually, if you start there and love it, then it's gonna be hairspray is gonna be way too tame for you. You know. That's well, then and you also run the risk of finding something that you appreciate uh, at an underground level, yeah. and then finding hairspray, and then you're forced to question whether or not he's sold out right, in terms mainstream. of like, yeah, 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 because yeah, there's that that whole thing. But I don't, really did it. I don't you know? think so. No. I don't think so. I think hairspray is a really great. Fuck you and fuck you for fucking you. Yeah, that's a fantastic. Yeah. Kind of well, he. I think it was more like the mainstream came to him, and and that happens yeah. with with certain directors, and I think that's when it works the best. Yeah. Because yeah, it is toned down to a sense, but it's still got that that sharp it's, sense of humor that he has. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's got it. It's definitely got moments that are divinely yeah. subversive. Good pun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pun intended. Yeah. I couldn't avoid that one. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, great. Oh, great so one. Hairspray, uh, mm-hmm. a little bit more tamer. Um, funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Mm. Have you seen that? I have not. That is so much fun. Mm-hmm. That's got Zero Mostel, um, mm. and it's a Stephen Sondheim musical. It has an, a very young Michael Crawford, who mm-hmm. later went on to become kind of famous for originating the role of uh, the Phantom and Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom of the Opera, okay. um, which is a very, very hit and miss musical. But if... Uh, I saw that really early on with Crawford. It was one of the first big musicals I saw. Mm-hmm. And his performance in that continues to be 
my high bar for a male performance in any musical. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, really, really amazing. And I've seen Phantom since then with other performers, and it is really not the same show. Um, I don't like the show so much <laughs> outside mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. All of the weak spots kind of shine through. Like yeah. All of the wonky kind of bits in the music and the ridiculously... I mean, the the main good character on the male side is such an asshole. <laughs> he gets away with everything, and then the family. Anyway, it's such a stupid musical. But uh, Crawford, in terms of like the acting, yeah, yeah. wow, really well done, amazing, uh -huh. amazing. Um, and he's gone down as uh, one of uh, like an iconic Broadway performance. Mm -hmm. Really unfortunate they didn't film that right. Early enough that they could include sure. him. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how that would have translated to film, even with him. But maybe if they'd done it early on, it wouldn't have been the disaster that it turned it was. out to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, but anyway, hi, I'm talking about funny thing. Oh yeah, yeah. young Michael Crawford and funny thing happened on yes. the way to the forum. Anyway, that as far as a musical, I don't know if musicals usually are successful for me. As comedies, mm -hmm. like I think the producers and funny thing happened on the way of the form, those are musicals that I can belly laugh at. Mm -hmm. um, well, definitely producers, yeah. Yeah, and a yeah. lot of other ones, like I know that they're funny, but I'm maybe more swept up in like the song and dance routines. Sure. Even with Monty Python, sometimes I'm not so much laughing along as just kind of mildly amused. And maybe right. that's like the pacing of the songs mm -hmm. that slow down the jokes. Sure. But somehow, like, the producers and Funny Thing Happened in the Way of the Form, I think they've managed to get the timing, the comedic and the musical right. timing, um, to conjoin much better than mm -hmm. I think I've seen in a lot Well, this is why, uh, I'm not a traditional musical um, buff, but that's why I like the Blues Brothers the most as my yeah. personal musical, because the movie is, to me, hilarious, and the music is perfect and cool at the same time, but it also sometimes adds humor, you know, like where Ray Charles just starts, he's the owner of a... Of a Mm -hmm. a music store and then just starts playing or yeah. uh you know james brown as a as a preacher and uh aretha franklin at the soul food restaurant just starts you know doing, i mean it's perfect and then they're dancing with aretha's dancers who are actually just eating at the, i mean it's just yeah. it's perfect it, and to me that's where the comedy and the musical you know kind of works there and, i have to yeah. see blues brothers again because i know it's like this basically like a perfect film but i haven't seen it enough to and i think the um the legacy of it kind of supersedes itself but the music is just tremendous, and and you won't see a better Dan Aykroyd Belushi movie of them to, you know together. And it was really, I think that may have been they did do another one. I think didn't they, maybe maybe that was it. But it started as a it's the best Saturday Night Live bit uh, yes, movie, um, absolutely, with the exception of Wayne's World. But yeah, yeah, I think even better than Wayne's. Oh, World. I, yeah, I, would, I think that one kind of stands alone. You can go into Blues Brothers and not even realize, I didn't realize for the longest time that yeah. had anything to do with Saturday Night Live. Right. Because at the time that I saw it, I wasn't old enough to stay up to watch Saturday That's Night right. Live. I didn't know Saturday Night Live. And they were touring there. as a group. Like, they would play, they played the yes. Fillmore in, or the Winterland in, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like Spinal Tap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Which is, no, I wasn't going to... That's another, that, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's another one where, like, the, the life of the movie... It all uh, takes on. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. takes. Again, great job, <laughs> Malin. <laughs> Okay, the crowd has died out at the restaurant we always go to. Hello. <laughs> it's almost too quiet now. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so Josephine is back. Welcome back. Hello. We are going to do our favorite musicals today. So there's no music in the background, but that's okay. Hopefully, we can get just. We'll yeah, we'll do some show tunes and mm -hmm. everything will be good. So, what is your list of favorite musicals? So I'll start with my very favorite, mm -hmm. which is South Pacific. Okay. Have yeah. you seen it? Heard Many it? Many years ago. Oh. Yes. I love it. It's so romantic. Maybe it's the World War II backdrop, uh -huh. but um, yeah, I love it. I think almost every song in that is just like magical, mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's so it's a kind of sweeping kind of feeling for me. Is it the kind of movie that you watch once a year or something like that? Um, so the movie I thought was a little cheesy. Mm -hmm. I actually came upon sound, or I I discovered South Pacific um, a few years ago when they were doing like a one night showing of it. It's on PBS with like oh. Reba McIntyre and Alec Baldwin mm. and a bunch of other people. That's how I first heard of it, and I mean it was just like a one night thing. So people they were just, they had minimal costumes and they were just actually reading from a book. Oh, 
and still it was so moving. Mm-hmm. I like cried. It was so oh. great. Yeah, and it's it's a little bit relevant today. Mm-hmm. It's about like prejudice mm-hmm. and where that comes from. Yeah, and, oh, so good, so right. good. Yeah. I find most musicals, it's always, not most of them, but a lot of them, the story is always always secondary. It's kind of like the old Fred Astaire and Ginger Roger movies. That, mm-hmm. like, there really doesn't need to be a plot. Because uh-huh. You're there for the song and dance type of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel like with this, I mean, don't they say that the, a good musical is one where the song actually advanced the story? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it's not a movie, but Crazy Ex-Girlfriend does a really good job of where the the songs move the story forward or they illuminate something about the character that wouldn't wouldn't be expressed the same way through like a dialogue or monologue so Mm -hmm. Crazy Squadron is is actually really good yeah I did like that too yeah Ryan Gosling and Steve Carell no oh no that was uh, Crazy Stupid Crazy Stupid Love Crazy Squadron is a show it's Oh, never mind. Yes, yeah, I don't know yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's okay. But you should watch it. It's really funny. I think I mean, you have told me about it. I yeah, do have to, yeah. Yeah, and the, the music that they do is all over the map. And it's, yeah, great. Got it. Okay. Next one for Sound of Music. Sure. Come on. That's, I, think that, I think you mentioned it was the very first movie you uh, that you yeah. saw in a theater. Or that I, I, that I remember seeing. I remember seeing, all. yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I just lost my mind. It's yeah. just, it's... I feel like it can like, kind of grow with you. When you're yeah. a kid, you love, you know, like, Doremi. Sure. Like, when you're older, you love the 16 going on 17, uh-huh. and it's just, yeah, I just love Julie Andrews in that, too. Yeah. She's, she really, um, not to get all serious here, no, no. but she really goes from, like, point A to point B in that movie. In the beginning, she's just full of doubt. She's wondering where her place is mm-hmm. in the world. What should she do? She's headstrong and everything. Yeah. And then by the end, she really matures into this role model for yeah. these kids, and she kind of knows her place and she's so much more confident and could you imagine anyone else playing that role because she's a dual threat I mean Mm -hmm. she can sing amazingly and she's a great actress Mm -hmm. and she can dance and she can dance she can do everything yeah yeah Yeah. so third one Music Man okay yeah Yeah, classic yeah Uh Yeah. Um, I've seen them with Kristen Chenoweth in it okay I love Kristen Chenoweth Mm -hmm. Um, okay so that's that's the other one okay Uh, Chess have you heard of that no I've never seen it. I've only ever heard the soundtrack, mm-hmm. but that's another one. Maybe it's a cult thing. Okay, well, yeah. we'll have to throw it in the yeah, cult boxes. Yes. <laughs> um, the other one is um, Once. No. Kind of, that's, when did that maybe come out? Like 2006, 2007? Okay. Yeah. But it's this yeah. Irish movie with the guy from. I can't remember. Is it this? We'll um, have to look it up. Yeah. Let's see. Once. Glenn Hansgard. Okay, 2006. Mm-hmm. Glenn Hansard, mm-hmm. uh, Marquita Erglova. Mm-hmm. So this is a foreign film, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's an Irish movie, mm-hmm. and The Frames. Okay. It's part of the group, The Frames. That's it. So yeah, that's a really sweet musical. Now, how did you hear about that one? Um, I just I only heard about it because it was playing at the San Francisco International mm. Film Festival. So it was getting really good buzz, and some friends invited me to watch it. So mm-hmm. I did, and yeah, it's just this really sweet love story yeah. between this Irish busker and this other woman and so they're kind of heartbroken and they find the way to each other through through their mutual music ah, so um, yeah and then they made it into a musical um, and I saw that actually a few years ago okay yeah so mm-hmm. I like and that the, was good too yeah I, honestly I like the, the movie more than the oh, musical really? I think the musical maybe maybe the, like in the theater they kind of like turn the volume up <laughs> that's possible but I, I, I love how kind of quiet the was right yeah so that'd be a good topic too which uh, musicals do you actually like better as a movie or better as an actual musical like yeah. rent yeah, have you seen both either one okay yeah. no and there's probably like hair like hair was a famous musical that i don't know like you know, of course mm-hmm. yeah so there's probably plenty that we go back and forth with yeah, yeah. that's a great list yeah. Oh, wait, more? Sorry. Oh, more? Oh, yeah. yeah okay okay sorry <laughs> once okay funny face oh yeah oh my god come on of course i i love it for so many reasons. Of course, Audrey Hepburn. It takes place in Paris. Mm-hmm. Her name is Jo. Her name is Josephine. Yeah, there you go. And I love how it's all about. Um, I like how her her character is just kind of like headstrong and totally rejects fashion, and you know, she's all about empathicalism. And she's but she's also kind of naive, yeah. and thinking that you know she'll go to Paris and she'll get swept up in this kind of intellectual movement. But yeah. it turns out the guy's super sleazy and Fred Astaire, and she's been kind of like not rejecting, but kind of keeping at a distance because she thinks he's all about like very superficial fashion yeah. worlds. You know, they end up falling in love. Of and course. I love that. <laughs> I, and I love that Richard Avedon was the was the inspiration for 
um, Fred Astaire's character. Yeah. His name is Dick Avery. Mm. And yeah, so I just love that. So movie. I used to always get Funny Face and Funny Girl when I was growing up, confused. Yeah. Complete, they're both musicals, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I um, I love the whole empathicalism thing. Yeah. It's all about empathy. And yeah, it just, it's just so great. Mm-hmm. So funny. And of course, Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And uh, Debbie Reynolds just passed away not too long ago, which is always sad. Yeah. And that's probably one of her most iconic roles, mm-hmm. even, even now. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to tie um, this in with the last thing we yeah, talked about, yeah. Debbie Reynolds is amazing in Albert Brooks' movie um, Mother. Yes. Yeah, she's, that's a cult classic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have been the cult classic. She's yeah. so fucking funny. In yeah. Because she could have played it as like, oh, I'm this quirky woman that doesn't really know what's going on. Mm-hmm. But it, when you watch the movie, she created like a real character. Oh, yeah. How about some sherbet? Uh oh. What kind of sherbet? Oh, what do you mean? It's delicious. Mm. Sweet tooth? Where do you find sweet tooth? I never hear of these brands. There's a basket and robins half a block from here. Oh, I wouldn't go down there. That's a waste of money. I'm not going to fall for that. I'm not going to fall for that? What are you falling for? They have ice cream in there. Well, there's no difference. Why should I pay triple the amount when they probably go to the supermarket and buy the very same kind? Mother, the ice cream is colorless. Look under the protective ice. The protective ice? You've actually named the clear hard crap that sits on the top? But if you don't want it, don't eat it. You know, when I'm down and you give me these words of wisdom and you say to me, Honey, you don't need to see a shrink. Just don't be hard on yourself. How can I possibly do that when I come from you? You're running a food museum here. Why can't you just go buy fresh ice cream? And you haven't even tried it. You're making fun of the ice cream and you haven't even tasted it. It's wonderful, Sherbert. I don't want it. I don't want, I'm not going to taste no. it. No? I don't want you it. You tell I me. Don't... Oh, God, this is horribly old. This tastes like an orange foot. Oh, my God almighty. Holy shit. Yeah. She actually, her later career, she was in some great bit roles. Did you ever see In and Out with uh, Kevin Klein? I saw it. She I plays remember. her. Mo- hey, that's it. That's the mom, um, and uh, she's really, she's got some really funny lines. No, that one too. Yeah, she's so great in yeah. in, um, in Mother. Yeah, yeah really yeah. great. Yeah. Even though she's married, I think to Wilford Brimley, who plays. He's always like cantankerous, <laughs> like old man. So yeah. And the last one, an American Embarrass. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love Gene Kelly. Yeah. And that's Vincent Minnelli. You director? I I don't know. Let me look. Gene Kelly, Citrus, um, and oh my god, I can't. Believe, oh no, I'm not. Yeah, Citrus, the dancing part, and oh my god, well Leslie Caron. American president. Yeah, I was right. Vincent Minnelli directed it, which of course is Vincent Minnelli's father, father and Judy Garland's uh-huh. husband. Yeah, I did not put. Wizard of Oz in that, or Cabaret. Oh, well, Cabaret. I, I just watched Cabaret not too long ago. It, it's, it's depressing. It is a depressing film, but of course it's, you know, yeah. <laughs> hate well, of yeah. Nazis taking over. Yeah. And but, yeah. yeah, that one, Cabaret, Wizard of Oz, you almost, you almost don't think of it as a musical, but it really is, mm-hmm. you know, just because it's so iconic. But, yeah, there's so many good songs in that. It's, the, it's almost cliche, but mm-hmm. still. Yeah. I almost think Willy Wonka is almost a... Uh, musical at times because oh, yeah, there's so much is. music in there yeah. that kind of progresses the story because mm-hmm. each kid has its own <laughs> thing and each he kid sings. has its own terror <laughs> exactly you know, except for Charlie yeah, but, yeah. that's so funny alright All right. great list thank you thank you if you enjoy this podcast and are an iTunes user please do the show a favor and head on over to the official iTunes page for damn good movie memories be sure to leave a rating and a review this will allow the show to appear higher in the algorithm and spread the joy of this podcast to the masses. If you are not an iTunes user, you can still listen and subscribe on Podbean at damngoodmoviememories.podbean.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook under our Damn Good Movie Memories page. You can also listen to a limited number of episodes on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and be sure to tune in next week for an all new episode of Damn Good Movie Memories.